Hi there, this is Tommy and welcome to the second video of a two-part video series dedicated to HCAP exam. Today, we're gonna talk about the range test portion of the exam, but there is more. We're also going to show you the proper shooting positions and after that, I'm gonna give you a tried and tested trick to place your shot every single time in the kill zone on that dear target during the exam, so stay tuned. On the day of the exam, you had to show up on the range with your gun of legal deer caliber. That effectively means 22 to 50 or more. Your gun has to be zeroed because you won't have an opportunity to zero it before the test. Obviously, you need to have your gun license and valid shooting insurance with you. Use of a moderator is prohibited on the exam, so remember that. In short, your gun needs to be dialed in and you need to be ready to go. The range test procedure goes as follows. Candidates are listed alphabetically and allocated to firing details. Each detail has from 16 up to 40 shooters depending on the shooting range used for the exam. And I'm telling you, you will feel the ground shaking underneath you when they all start shooting at once. This can add to your stress during the exam, so be ready for it. The course of fire looks like this. You're gonna take three shots, 100 meters, prone position. Your job is to place them in a four inch group. This really shouldn't be a problem. If it is a problem, you probably shouldn't be out in the field stalking deer anyway. Instead, you should be probably at the gun club practicing. Once you're done with the grouping test, you will be required to place six shots in the hard lung area of the deer target. Two shots, 100 meters prone position, two shots, 60 meters sitting or kneeling position, and two shots, 40 meters standing position. You're allowed to use shooting sticks or any other usual shooting aids that you would normally use in the field. During the exam, you will get one spare attempt, meaning if you fail a grouping test, you will be allowed to retry. If you fail deer target shooting, you will be allowed to retry, but you can't retry both, so only one retry is allowed. And now, let's talk about proper shooting positions and how to assume them. For that, let me hand you over to someone who is much more qualified than I am. Our guest is a veteran army sniper, Aaron Turner from Wild Atlantic Game Hunting Services. And right after the demonstration, I'm gonna show you a proven trick to help you place all your shots in the hard lung area of the deer target during the exam. So don't go away. Okay, so for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna quickly demonstrate this rifle's unloaded, okay? The magazine's empty and there are no rounds in the chamber. We're talking about the uh, H-cap shooting test. The first position we're gonna cover is the prone position. You fire three shots from the prone position at a zeroing target. If you pass this test, you then progress to shoot two shots at the deer, deer target from 100 meters prone. So the prone position, we're going to line up our rifle uh, on the target, it's important that the target, the rifle is pointing naturally at the target and is not canted off to one side. So any pressure you're putting on your body to try and drag the rifle back across the target is going to affect your shot. So the first thing we want to do is line up our rifle on our lane looking down. Once we've identified our target number and our target, our uh, target lane, so we've got the right target, we have our rifle pointing naturally at the target. We're then going to uh, adopt the position behind the rifle. Right, so your body wants to be lying naturally behind the rifle. If you have shooting aids such as a, a bipod or sandbags, this is the time to deploy them and build up your rifle into the position so it fits your body comfortably without causing any undue stress. So for me now, the bipods are too low, so I'm gonna raise my bipod legs to a more comfortable position. Okay, what I do then is I'm gonna look through the scope to make sure I've identified my target and I've got a clear line of board to my target. I'm going to adjust my body position so it's uh, in a line behind the rifle and there's no, no stress on my body uh, just trying to correct the rifle and pull the rifle back onto the, onto the target. Okay, so this is the position of my left hand in the prone position. I have it in the, the uh, underside of the, the stock of the rifle holding the, the butt of the rifle into my shoulder. This is the most comfortable to have it. If I have it forward here, uh, it's causing undue strain to my back and there's no reason if you have a bipod or you're resting on shooting sticks There's no reason to have your hand forward So if you put it back here out of the way and it's doubling up holding the butt into the shoulder And creating more stable fire position Okay, my right hand then I take a firm grip of the pistol grip And my tri trigger finger resting along the trigger guard Once my position is built up, I'm ready to go and I give them the order to load and fire 
We load the rifle, reline on the target. And without breaking the position then, we're gonna slide the bolt forward, chambering around. Keeping my finger out of the trigger guard, resting alongside the trigger. Once I'm happy that I'm on target, I'm gonna slide the safety catch to fire. And then I'm gonna gently take out the pressure on the trigger until it bites. And I'm gonna keep constant pressure on the trigger until it releases. Once this trigger has released the shot, I am then gonna hold the trigger back. I'm not gonna snatch it and let it go forward quickly. Releasing the trigger should be a separate action. So once the shot's released, I hold the trigger for a couple of seconds. I watch the shot go down the range, check my fall of shot, and I release the trigger. Okay, without breaking the position then, I reach forward with my fingers, raise the bolt, put it to the rear. I'll see the ejected case out the corner of my uh, eject out the rifle. And I chamber my second round, and again, finger on the side of the trigger guard. Once I'm happy I'm on target, I'll take up the pressure on the trigger, and I'll keep the constant pressure on the trigger until the shot breaks. Okay, so for the next shooting position, we're going to use the shooting sticks at a closer range, I think it's in at 50 metres. Um, you can use, these are Primo's shooting sticks, you don't necessarily have to have a pair of these, you can use um, bipods a bipod stick system or the Viper Lex, the quad stick system. Uh, you can even, even use homemade sticks. I've used homemade sticks for years. It's anything you can, anything you want really to, uh, to aid stable shooting platform. Um, the important thing to know is about this um, on the shooting test day is to make sure you've practiced your position before you turn up to the range because you don't want to turn up to the range and start experimenting with positions on, on the test day because it will it'll affect, your, uh, affect your score. It should be a, flapping about your position and trying to get it right on the day. So you want to have this all practiced um, at home before you turn up for the shooting test. So again, you'll move up to the, the shooting range. You'll identify your lane, identify your targets. You set up your sticks on your lane. At this point, your rifle will still be unloaded, probably with the bolt still out. And then you start to build up your position. Um, it's not a time shoot. So again, take your time building up position, make sure you get it right. Make sure you're, you're happy with your shooting position. You can adjust the legs or adjust the, the height of the bipod to bring you down into the com a comfortable shooting position. This is how it looks with the, the left elbow on the left knee, or some people like to hold on to the bipod to give it a bit more secure than the sticks. Okay, this is a fairly stable platform. If I come a bit lower, I can rest my elbow on my knee and hold the rifle as well. The only uh, disadvantage here is my right elbow is now floating around. The front of the rifle is supported by the sticks. The rear of the rifle is hanging in my, sh in my shoulder. So if I was to swap and put my right elbow on my right knee, the front of the rifle is still supported by the sticks. I can hold the rifle into the sticks with my left hand. But now my right elbow is supporting the weight of the rifle is now um, on my right knee. And I've got a stable fire position from here. Okay, so once, you're, once you have your position built up again and your target identified, you'll again be given the, the order to, uh, to load and fire. So you take out your magazine. It's only two rounds from this position. Okay, so once you're, once you're built up and ready to go, you'll get the order to, in your own time go on. So you chamber around, remove the safety catch, and once you're confident you're on target, you'll fire and do your best to maintain the position. The target is significantly bigger. It's the, the kill zone of the deer target. So it's a four inch target at 50 meters. So it's, it's not an easy shot. People do miss it, but it's if you've practiced and you've practiced, practicing your position is the most important thing. Because people don't often shoot from leading positions it's either prone or standing off five perplex. So uh, uh, practicing your position for the shot is the, the best way to ensure success. Once you've everyone's fired the two shots, you'll be given the order then to unload the rifle and remove the bolts ready for the next shot. So I'm quickly going to demonstrate the kneeling position with a different set of sticks. These are Viper Flex sticks that have been donated by my friend Tommy. Uh, so again, you identify your target and your lane. Have your, uh, your sticks adjusted to the right height again. The sticks are adjustable to make sure you know uh, the, right, the correct height before you come on the range. This will save time and uh, embarrassment messing around on the range on the day of the test. Again, you want to set your rifle up facing your target and adopt a comfortable shooting position behind the sticks. 
Now, as you can see from these shooting sticks, they're slightly high for me. Because again, it's all about building up your position before practicing, before you turn up. So, um, if, you're, if you're testing your sticks before and you think, oh, these are too high for the kneeling, um, either adjust them or change sticks for the, the test day because the, um, being uncomfortable while you're shooting is gonna, it's gonna affect your fall of shot. If you're straining to keep the rifle on target, you're gonna be snapping off shots just to break the shooting position and that's, the, that's not gonna help with uh, accurate shooting. Okay, so we're just gonna cover the uh, sitting or kneeling position without the use of sticks. Um, everyone these days usually has sticks, but if you forget them or don't have them or in, in a position where you're out on a hunt and you only have a biopod with you and you don't have shooting sticks, I'm just gonna quickly demonstrate an alternative to uh, shooting using the sitting or kneeling position without sticks. The idea of the shooting position is as low to the ground as possible is the more stable you can get. So sitting is obviously um, more stable than kneeling. There's a fine line between sitting and kneeling. And technically, if you're sitting on your foot, you're kneeling. So I'll just uh, quickly demonstrate the um, kneeling position here. Again, this can be adapted to, uh, to suit you, to suit your physique. Um, bigger guys might find it easier to be more upright. Again, I'm gonna start off uh, kneeling. This is how uh, I would do it. I showed you in the, the demo, kneeling down on my right knee, sitting as low to the ground as I can, keep my gravity as low as I can, and resting my left elbow off my left knee, and building up the fire position like this. It's a relatively stable fire position, but again, there's nothing supporting my right elbow and the back of the rifle. I get to swap over and to kneel the other side. So I'm kneeling on my left knee, sitting back as low as I can on my, with my, on my left ankle, pretty much. I'm then supported in the back of the rifle more, but now my left elbow is free floating. So either of these positions, whichever you feel comfortable in, whichever one you practice the most. Again, they're not ideal. You can't hold the position for very long. And they're more for, for uh, if you're stuck in a, in a situation where you don't have sticks or you can't get to your sticks and you have to shoot something quickly. But again, they will come down to how much you practice them as to how successful you'll be with them. They're not something that I would advise anyone just to using on the day, um, definitely practice them first. So the third uh, third shooting position we're going to cover is the standing position. Um, for this you can use your shooting sticks as a support, so either your uh, your bipods, or your tripods, or the Viper Flex, the quad systems. I'm going to use tripods for this, I prefer tripods for, uh, for deer hunting for standing shots. Extend your sticks to the right height. Again, this is not a timed exercise, so take your time setting up your position. Okay, again, comfort is everything. You need to be comfortable if you're gonna shoot well. So you build up your position. Make sure your sticks are square. And just adjust the height or play of your sticks to make sure that you're comfortable. An important thing to remember at this range is it's incredibly easy to shoot the wrong target at closer ranges. Um, the best way to avoid this is to dial out your scope, put it down to the, the, lowest, mag the lowest magnification. Uh, you'd be surprised how easy it is to walk down the range and uh, engage your neighbor's target. And it works well for him to get more scores, but not for you. So at the, at the, the closest range, the standing position, uh, just be aware that that's, that's when most people make the most mistakes with uh, engaging the wrong target. So let's ensure you're definitely on the right, the right lane and the right target. Uh, your scope out, out to the max, and uh, at this range, it's pretty much um, point and shoot exercise. Uh, there would be no drop in the bullet, it should be a flat shot. Load the rifle, chamber around. I find it handy to keep your knees bent here, if you have knees straight, it tends to put a bit of uh, extra strain on your position. And then once you're comfortable and you're happy with your point of aim, remove the safety catch. And again, just gently squeeze the trigger, keep the constant pressure on the trigger until the shot breaks. Okay, once your shot is fired and you've watched it go down range, strike the target, release the trigger, and without breaking the position, reach forward, eject the fired case, and chamber a new round. Fire the second round, and then wait for the range staff, unload the rifle, wait for the range staff to give you the order to move forward to check your target. Okay, um, the idea with the ideal system with the, the standing position is, is um, you're not going to hold this position for long. It's, it's uh, probably the least stable, stable and the least comfortable of, of firing positions. So it's very much a case of, of uh, sort of doing the best you can with it. Um, 
the quad sticks are probably the the uh, the best system for for standing. They support the back and the front of the rifle, so you're not there's no play in the no wobble in the back of the rifle. But again, it's down to practicing before you go on the ranges. Uh, practice with your practice like dry firing with your rifle. Practice setting up on your sticks. You know, even setting up on your sticks. Sometimes you set the rifle up and then you know you lose a leg and your rifle goes flying or something like that. So make sure all these things are, are squared away before you come on the range for, for the test day. Okay, so it's quickly going to run through the uh, the standing position again. This time we're going to use the Viper Flex quad system just to show you the difference in the stability. So again, onto the range, be instructed to uh, line up in front of your target. So once you've identified your target, set your sticks up on your lane naturally in front of your target with your weapon system on the sticks. And the advantage of the, the Viper Flex over the tripod, you can see here the rifle is completely supported at the rear and the front. Okay, there's a little wobble side to side but that will be taken out once you once you take control of the weapon. Uh, this is a more stable position because it's it's obviously supported. There's no there's no strain on you holding it into your shoulder. It's gonna naturally rest in there. Once the Viper Flex 6 are set to the right height, the butt of the rifle is gonna naturally stay into your shoulder. There's no there's no uh, no strain on any of your muscles holding that that rifle into your into your shoulder and it allows you to hold this position for longer. I said the standing position is the, the least stable and it's the least the hardest to hold for the longest time but the Viper Flex sticks are, are good for, for alleviating that because they do give you the the uh, the ability to, to rest the rifle completely without you know it's not not causing me any strain to keep the rifle in this in this uh, in the aim position. Um, but the Viper Flex sticks they're quite an expensive investment. Um, this is a pair I made myself years ago. I simply made out of garden poles and a few bolts. I have it set tied together with bits of string so it's the ideal height for me. So the thing I used to find with the sticks is that they spread too far apart and you'd end up losing one leg of them. So it's all tied together so it's perfectly the height for me for standing. And again you just stick your rifle on and the rifle is perfectly supported. Okay, it doesn't look as cool as my flex sticks, but it does the job. And this, this is what I use. This is my lamping setup. This is accounted for hundreds of foxes like this. So, and again, this is for standing. If you're going to do a lot, if you're standing, if you're uh, wherever you're stalking, whatever is mostly standing shots. The quad sticks are are uh, if you're going to be holding your standing position, they are the way forward. Okay, so again, it's going to cover the standing position without the use of any sticks. Um, this is not massively stable position it's more for snapshots at close range so again you identify your target you won't be able to break the position to load make ready the rifle so it'll have to be done before you enter the position so once the rifle is loaded and made ready your left hand as far back as you can underneath the on the magazine housing up against the trigger guard and right hand on the pistol and you come from this position here your left elbow tucked in and your right elbow tucked in as tight as you can just bring the weapon system down keep coming down in Remove the safety catch as you come down, and then once you're happy with your point of aim, it's apply constant pressure to the trigger until the shot breaks. Once the shot's been released and, and you've seen the strike on target, you're going to break the position to reload the rifle. And now, as promised, a simple trick to help you place all your shots in the hard lung area of the deer target. This is what the deer target looks like, and the highlighted area is where you are required to place your six shots. Remember how I told you that the grouping test is easy because it's a massive 4 inch target? Look, that target fits nicely inside the kill zone. In fact, the kill zone is even bigger! Now look closely at the deer target and identify the point that is right in the center of the imaginary grouping target inside the kill zone. Aim at that point! Easy! It's an old rule. Aim big, miss big. Aim small, miss small. If you aim at the big kill zone, the chances are you'll miss it. If you aim right at the center of your imaginary grouping target, even if you miss slightly, your shot's still gonna be well within the required kill zone. So that's it. I hope you found this video helpful and I wish you a lot of success on the exam.